We have made it down to the Dahab Lagoon and it is absolutely beautiful. I'm not sure if the GoPro is actually picking up like how vivid the colors are, but like it's insane. Then you have the mountain range all around. It's beautiful out here, guys. So we have officially made it here in Amman. Um, we are in this beautiful, beautiful hotel. It is called the House Boutique, and I would say that it, it has exceeded our expectations. Yeah, definitely. It's really like a studio apartment, and it's laid out very nicely. It's very spacious. Um, so yes, I'm excited to be here. You guys know we switch it up. We were on that overnight tree. <laughs> <laughs> Right we do a little bit we do it all and so um but yeah this is quite the treat yeah i'm, I'm excited about it um uh, for our one day here yeah but and i loved our first hotel too so don't absolutely. get it twisted we love it absolutely all. it's been quite the journey uh so far today we woke up about 1 15 this morning in dahab to prepare for our transfer that was at 2 a.m to take us to sharm airport mm -hmm. And we got there at 3 a.m. for a flight that left at 5.30 a.m. So when we got there, we talked to uh, the Egypt Air gentleman who was working the desk. And um, we just asked, could they check our bags all the way to here, which is Amman. And that was because we had to book, when we originally booked our tickets, we had to book two separate tickets. We had to book a one-way flight from Sharm to Cairo. And then we had to book a round-trip flight from Cairo to Amman, which will put us back to Cairo later on you know, in our vacation. And they were ultimately able to do that. So the reason why that was critical is because we had a quick turnover when we landed in Cairo. And what we learned during our time so far, and a couple times that we have visited Cairo, um, or we've hit the airport, is that it takes forever for the bags to come out. So we got that done. We barely made our flight in Cairo still. And even though we didn't have to recheck our bags, but right. we still made that. So that was the journey. And then we finally made it to Amman and we were like one of the last ones off the plane, which is fine. Um, went through customs and all that. We get down to the baggage claim and the belt's still going and we don't see our bags. Like, yeah, no <laughs> bags. The belt's still moving, but no new bags are coming yeah. out. It's just whatever was on the conveyor belt is just going round and round. And none of them were our bags. And one thing that's funny is I, I feel like when we ask them to check our bags all the way to Amman, it's always a little chance of like, oh, I hope this works out well. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if you've heard it. Usually I'm first sleep, but Raja was first sleep this time on the plane. But when we were actually in Cairo, they made an announcement and said, um, we're gonna be about 15 minutes yeah. late pulling out um, of the gate because bad. yeah, we have to, check extra passenger bags or something like that so in my mind i was like yay our bags made it <laughs> but um if it was it got lost somewhere on the plane because we don't have our bags so. yeah hopefully nobody took them hopefully they're just coming on the way um, yeah but luckily guys we don't really pack many valuables mm -hmm. in our check bags Absolutely. um we want our clothes, our toothbrush was in there, and stuff yeah. like that. But again, things that are easily replaceable or that we can pick up just 
prayerfully they'll find our bag. So, yeah. but we can pick up a toothbrush Absolutely. to hold us over. So. We're just gonna we're gonna go off the flow as normal. Yeah, not the worst. Yeah, we're not case we're not scenario. pressed too much. Of course, we want our stuff, but we want our stuff. But other people have lost. Absolutely. Much worse. We'll, we'll, we'll make it happen with what we have. Yeah. And uh, take it all in stride, all the experience, and one day at a time. Yeah, but guys, <laughs> the last thing I want to say is that um, arriving here in Amman, we got our, a rental car. Oh, absolutely. And this was the first place. Usually, we're always getting rental cars most places we go. But for this trip, this is the first time getting a rental car. We did, it, we did taxis and transfers. Mm -hmm the whole time while we were in Egypt. And driving here, coming from Egypt, um, Amman is like very, maybe not very similar, but similar to the US mm -hmm. in ways. Like even the types of cars on the road, it looked similar to us. We passed several universities on the way and their campuses look like ours, with the cars parked out front and kids. Yeah. Like it just, it was cool because it didn't remind me of where we live in the States, but it gave me a similar vibe of people, just, like you had the Starbucks, and it just, like the city just looked like a typical city that you would kind of find in the States in terms of how people interacted. So that was kind of cool to see and a change from coming from the towns we visited in Egypt. I agree, and the driving itself was, is very doable. Um, mm -hmm. The maps were a bit confusing, but I think we, once we get outside of the city, it'll be a little easier because it'll yeah. be some long stretches. But um, I think it's very, it's very, very doable for anybody who wants to come over here and, and drive around themselves. I think it's, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's very, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's easy because there is, a, of course, an adjustment with the culture, but it's easy. Um, Maybe like a less than a New York City. Yeah. But maybe a mix between New York City and Washington, D.C. That's fair. Because the driving is a little aggressive, but it's not like Cairo aggressive. Oh, no. It's no, nowhere no, no. near that. But no, no, no. like, if you want to drive over here, you'll, you'll be fine, especially outside of the city. Like when we are first living in the airport, like, it was like open for Oh, us. yeah. It's fine. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the rental cars are also pretty cheap. I think we got ours for almost a week, and it was like under $200. Mm -hmm. So I mean, like, you can, it's feasible. It's yeah. feasible, it's better than getting transferred everywhere. But um, yeah, so that's about it. We've got some room service, so we're gonna eat down, and then we're gonna go to our first day for today. All right, we'll check in a little later. All right, guys. Gonna give these a wash before putting them over there. It's so cool to have a full kitchen. that we did forget to mention is that we did pick up the Jordan Pass for our visit here in Jordan. You can purchase these online before you come and simply print it out before you arrive. Um, and it just made sense for us to get it. Uh, I think it was about $110. If that's wrong, I'll just put it down in the bottom of the clip. But um, your visa is almost $60 and we knew we wanted to visit Petra and that was also another $60 almost. So right there, pay for itself. And then the other thing that we knew we wanted to visit was Drash. And that right here is spectacular. The entrance alone is blowing us away. Guys, we are here at the Hippodrome, and this is the smallest known Hippodrome of the Roman Empire. Hippodromes were built for chariot racing, and this one stretches 265 meters long, 50 meters wide, and seated 17,000 people. Although it is the smallest known Hippodrome, it is the best preserved. Something that we found really interesting is that Jerash actually used to attract more than 1,000 tourists a day. And here in the Hippodrome, they would actually do demonstrations of gladiator fighting and chariot racing. It's quite remarkable. Since we've been here, we've probably bumped into fewer than 30 visitors. So please be sure to come and visit Jerash on your next trip to Jordan.
guys, we made it here just in time. We got to see everything that we wanted to see. It took us about an hour north to get here, so just be mindful of that because the weather may change a bit. It is a bit cooler here than in Amman. But right now, we're gonna head back down, see if we have any update on our luggage. That would be awesome. And uh, probably grab some food but uh that's gonna be about it for today i hope you guys enjoyed this video like share and subscribe and remember visit Jeresh. so guys it is crazy how easily you float here the dead sea is about nine times saltier than your normal ocean it sits 430 meters below sea level making it the lowest place here on earth